Welcome to my lecture online. I think it's a good idea to take a closer look at the graph representing the three different solutions to the differential equation. The case where we have an overdamped case, the critically damped case, and I guess I need a D here, damped. There we go. And the underdamped case. Now, we're missing a D there as well. Oh, yes, we're missing lots of Ds. All right, there we go. Now, we already know that in the case of overdamping, that the alpha squared is larger than the omega sub dot squared. In the case of critical damping, we have alpha squared equals omega squared. And under damping, we have alpha squared less than omega squared. And of course, we go to the solution of the equation, of the differential equation. That's where I came from. We can also look at the relative relationship between the inductance and the resistance and the capacitance. We understood that as R gets bigger, Eventually, we go from an overdamped case to a critically damped case to an underdamped case. And for reference, we have the three general solutions to differential equations. And of course, we realize that, ooh, I think I don't want to write that. Let me write it A1 and A2. That's the convention that I used, so I want to stick to that convention, okay? And uh, notice that, yes, if we need to have a reference to the equations, this is what the equations are. But Let's go look at the graphical solution of the three. First of all, the overdamped case is such that the voltage goes to zero asymptotically. Of course, in theory, it never really gets to zero. It has to go through an infinite amount of time to get to zero. But for the practical purposes, after a certain amount of time, the voltage is close enough to zero where we can simply call it zero. So that's called the overdamped case. The critically damped case, the voltage tends to go past the zero point and then asymptotically reaches the zero from below. So that's typically the what we call the critically damped case. And in the under damped case, the voltage goes across the zero, comes back, goes positive, negative, positive, negative. And then depending upon how much damping there is, it will go for a while before it comes to a halt. So now let's take a closer look at the under damped case, the red curve right here. So notice that is the case where the resistance is large enough so that it's not critically damped or overdamped. The smaller the resistance, the more you tend to go to an overdamped case. The bigger the resistance, the more you tend to go to an underdamped case. So if the resistance is large enough to not be in the underdamped realm of the world here, now we still can have for large resistances, it can be smaller or bigger. If the resistance is smaller, a smaller resistance, still large enough to have an underdamped case, but if the resistance is smaller, notice a smaller resistor gives you a larger alpha. Alpha will be bigger, and if alpha is bigger, when we subtract a bigger number from omega sub naught, the damped frequency of oscillation will be smaller. A smaller oscillation, that means that this will be stretched out. The more it gets stretched out, the smaller you make resistance, eventually, if you stretch it out enough, the red curve will eventually begin to look like the blue curve. It will no longer go across the zero point, the zero uh, line for voltage, and it will become like the blue curve. So the more you stretch it out, the more the red will become like blue. Now, if R becomes bigger, a bigger R means that this will become smaller. You'll be subtracting a smaller number, and so the the damped oscillation frequency will start increasing that will cause the red curve to scrunch up and you'll have more and more oscillations like that in a given amount of time. And eventually, as R approaches infinity, when R becomes infinitely large that no current will flow through the resistor, all the current will go through the inductor and the capacitor, we now have a circuit without resistance, so therefore no damping. And so as R becomes infinite, that means that alpha will go to zero. When alpha goes to zero, the damped oscillation frequency will approach the natural oscillation frequency of the circuit without the resistor. Alpha will go to zero, and the damped oscillation frequency will become the natural oscillation frequency. And of course, that's, what, that's when you have something that will go like this and never stop oscillating. The, the energy will simply go back and forth between the inductor and the capacitor, inductor and capacitor. It never, it's essentially the under damping becomes zero damping, and then you have a frequency that goes like this. Everything will be scrunched up, and there will not be a diminishing of the voltage as it goes back and forth because there's no damping at that point. So hopefully that helps you understand what this curve represents. If R becomes bigger, the red will simply get stretched out. It'll eventually become like the blue line, and if you make R even bigger than that, you go from the critically damped to the over damped case 
case, and you never quite get to the zero voltage until time becomes infinite, of course, in theory only. And that is how we need to look at that particular graph that describes the three different cases for the three different types of solutions for an overdamped case, a critically damped case, and an underdamped case. And that is how it's done.